The cuisine of the Mid-Atlantic region is strongly influenced by multicultural states. It's where Epicurean presidents like George Washington and Thomas Jefferson introduced new foods, and where early settlers took advantage of the rich soil and mild climate by planting orchards and farming the land. Today's defining recipes from this region include a wonderful Baltimore peach cake, delicious Kaiser rolls, a beautiful black raspberry crumb cake, and the ubiquitous black and white cookie. All today on Martha Bakes. At the height of peach season in Maryland, you'll find bakeries selling slabs of Baltimore peach cake, a local food tradition dating back to the city's early immigrants. Baked in a sheet pan and leavened with yeast, it's a unique recipe and I can't wait to share it with you. The dough is very easy to make. Uh, proof, one package of active dry yeast in a half a cup of whole milk. Just let it proof a little bit with a tablespoon of sugar. That should get that yeast going. In another bowl, sift two cups of unbleached all-purpose flour and a half a teaspoon of salt. Whisk this together to mix it up. And we need one tablespoon plus two teaspoons of granulated sugar in the dry ingredients. And whisk that around. Very easy. One large egg in our yeast, these are our wet ingredients, so just add your dry ingredients to your mixer bowl and make sure you're fitted here with a dough hook. This dough hook quickly and efficiently kneads the dough and develops the gluten in the flour, the protein in wheat dough responsible for that elasticity that we like. And we're adding the wet ingredient, the yeast, the sugar, the milk, and the egg. Now the dough is coming together nicely and add four tablespoons of room temperature softened butter. Have a rising bowl all buttered. This is where your dough will rise. Well, the moment of truth has occurred. The dough is now completely entwined around the dough hook. That's exactly what you want. And now we can turn off the machine and put the dough in the buttered bowl to rise. And if you taste the dough, which I love to do, I love to taste raw dough, it does taste a lot like brioche. And you can just fold this in on itself like this. And this is the last little bit of the process. Put that smooth side up cover with plastic wrap and put this in a warm place to rise. And so look, doubled in bulk. Just loosen it from the buttered bowl. Oh, it's light as can be. And take this and put it right in a well buttered quarter sheet pan. So just get this even as you can. This has to rise again before you cover it with those delicious Maryland peaches. Warm, dry, not too bright a place. Still doubled in bulk. So after one hour, look, our dough has risen to the top of the pan. It's very light and fluffy to the touch. And we have three large peaches that have been cut into wedges and just place them evenly and just go in long rows. Three rows will do for this size peach. There are virtually hundreds of varieties of peaches that vary greatly in color and flavor and form. There are clingstone peaches and there are freestone peaches. It's best for baking to use the beautiful uh, freestone because the pit falls easily away from the flesh. I like the beautiful yellow peaches with the red skins. And when you're at the market or at the farmer's market, only buy peaches that are unblemished, soft to the touch, and highly scented. There, look how nice that looks. Now sprinkle with about a quarter of a cup of medium grain sanding sugar on all the peaches and try to get it completely covered. Your oven should be preheated to 350 degrees and because this is going to go right in the oven. 
So easy, so good. Bake it till it's golden brown and set in the center, and that's gonna take anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes. We have one that's all done. It's so beautiful. And while the peaches are still very hot, brush with just a little bit of red currant jelly. You could use apricot too if you like, or peach. Now cool this lovely dessert in the pan for 15 minutes. Then it will slide out onto a rack, cool for a little bit longer, and then start cutting it into nice squares. Next time your farmer's market has juicy, ripe peaches, I suggest you give this recipe a try. You and your family will find it extremely delicious. You'll find this distinctive looking roll stacked high in delis and coffee carts all over New York City. It's chewy on the outside, soft on the inside. They're remarkably easy to make and they are so much better than store-bought. Six cups of flour in your mixing bowl. Nice level cups. Not an all-purpose flour for this, but we're using bread flour. Bread flour is best for bread, pretzels, anything chewy and requiring plenty of structure. So to the six cups of flour, add one tablespoon of coarse salt. This is kosher salt. And you can whisk that together. One and three quarters cup of lukewarm water. One package of active dry yeast. Let this proof in the warm water, and the water should be no hotter than 110 degrees. Be careful about that. Stir that up a little bit. And the idea of proofing is really to test that the yeast is alive, and one tablespoon of the best honey. This is for my bees. Very nice flower honey. Let that just proof. You wanna see a few bubbles emerging on the surface of the water. This can be put right here on the machine and lock the machine into the water. It looks, it looks nice and frothy. Add two large eggs. I'm gonna break them into the bowl first, mix them up a little bit. So it's a little bit eggy, the dough. And pour this into the flour. And the dough hook will do a very nice job of saving you a lot of effort. And now, when the dough comes away from the bowl like it's doing, add the butter, four tablespoons, a tablespoon at a time. Unsalted, room temperature butter. And you see how it just gets incorporated right into the dough. It gets sticky and then it gets very nice and smooth. So it's been kneading for about four minutes. It looks very good. It's come away from the bowl. It's all on the dough hook. Release this from the machine and put the dough into a well-buttered bowl to rise until doubled in bulk. And that'll take just about one hour. And look how beautiful the dough is. It is developing its texture, rising like this till doubled in bulk. Put it on a floured board. <gasps> so nice. It is a beautiful texture. It does not stick to the buttered bowl. And you can just fold it into thirds and then fold it into thirds. Again, a letter fold it's called, just like that. And put this fold side down right back into the bowl, cover again, and let rise for the second time. And that's one more hour. So here is our dough risen for the second time. And divide the dough into 12 equal pieces. Now you might ask, how does one do that? Well, if you make a rectangle of approximately the same thickness, 12 pieces, you can cut this down the middle. And each of these pieces can be cut into six pieces. Always start in the middle. So this is the middle and into thirds. And in one way you can actually test your dividing skills is to use a scale. 
and that scale will tell you if your pieces are exactly the same. There. Now the next thing, form our Kaiser rolls. Fold it and roll it. Form a knot like this. So that goes like that. And then this one goes under and through. This one goes over. And that's the first Kaiser roll. And keep working quickly so your dough doesn't dry out. Tie it in a knot. It's a lot of fun to work with dough like this. This one goes under and through. There, that is a perfect Kaiser roll. And these are now ready to rise covered again in a warm, cozy place. So now, brush very lightly with a beaten egg, just like that. Don't deflate, don't press down hard, and use a very soft, natural brush for this. These can be made ahead of time. You can freeze them, warm them when you're having a big breakfast party. So there, that's ready to go. Some poppy seeds. Poppy seeds tend to have a life of their own. They dance. So just sprinkle all over the roll as much as you like. Have your oven preheated to 350 degrees. And this is gonna take anywhere from 30 to 35 minutes. Rotate halfway through. When these are cooled completely, and cool them on a rack right out of the oven, eat it the way you wanna eat it. I really do love these rolls slathered, oh, look at the great texture inside, slathered with delicious butter, a nice cup of tea with lemon. That's one way. The other way, with poached eggs, bacon, it's great, whichever way you prefer. Golden brown and delicious, these homemade Kaiser rolls, I don't think can be beat. If you're from the Mid-Atlantic region, you most likely have an opinion about crumb cake. It's a regional specialty introduced by immigrant German bakers in the late 1800s. Today, I'm gonna to share my version using black raspberries from my farm and homemade buttermilk. We're gonna make buttermilk first. So in a glass measuring cup, three quarters of a cup of whole milk. Add one tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice. It's amazing how quickly whole milk turns into a much thicker, beautiful mixture called buttermilk. This is really acidulated milk and it adds tenderness and lightness to the batter. Now you can start by creaming the butter. Six tablespoons of room temperature unsalted butter. Always look for good quality butter. And one cup of sugar. And just add this to the butter in a slow stream. You want to cream the butter with the sugar so that all the sugar granules kind of melt into the butter. And it's a nice, smooth, creamy mixture instead of a crunchy mixture. You don't want to taste those sugar granules. And it really ensures that it will develop as many fine bubbles as possible during the creamy stage, which is a very crucial step in producing a light textured cake. So this is already becoming lighter in color. We also need the zest of one brightly skinned lemon. And zesting a lemon is most easily done by using what I call a great grater, originally used by carpenters. And now for the dry ingredients. Two cups of all-purpose flour, Unbleached white flour is really great for all these simple baking projects. Two teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt. I always use kosher salt in my baking projects. And sift this together by using a whisk. One egg. If you wanna just be sure if you don't, don't know your eggs as well as I know my eggs, always break it into a small bowl that way if anything, perchance, is wrong with the egg, you can not ruin your entire batter. On medium speed, start adding your dry ingredients. We don't want to overbeat this cake, but we don't want lumpy batter either. 
and you can see how nice and thick that buttermilk is. It's a kind of thick batter. So now, black raspberries aren't superb. These are frozen. Uh, they're the shape of a raspberry, of a small raspberry, but they are really, really dark, dark purple. And we're gonna toss these with a little bit of flour. Just a tablespoon will do. The flour will help suspend the berries in the batter. That's a secret. Do that with blueberries, raspberries, black raspberries. And so half these berries go into the batter. And actually, I like working with frozen berries because they're easy to handle. They're hard and they don't get mushy. If you work quickly, you can get them right into the, the batter and they will be suspended throughout. Now notice the pan is buttered heavily. It is lined with a sheet of parchment paper held in place by these nice little clips and then buttered again. This is a nine inch square pan typically used for brownies, blondies, and crumb cakes. So beautiful. So spread this batter. You can see how thick it is and with the addition of the frozen berries it seems to seize up even a little bit more. Now the rest of the berries just sprinkle all over the top of the batter. And now for the crumbs, one and a half cups of flour. One and a half teaspoons of best quality cinnamon. Cinnamon just goes so well in crumbs. I just love the taste. Half a teaspoon of salt. And a half a cup of packed light brown sugar. And I find packing it with your fingers is best. Let's see how I'm breaking up everything, mixing it all together. Those few little lumps of brown sugar don't matter because you want crumbs. Now, three quarters of a cup of butter at that cool room temperature. Now, it's important to make crumbs that are large, thick clumps. Try to get the butter mixed with all of the dry ingredients, all that flour and cinnamon. You can see it's starting to form nice lumpy crumbs. So now, squeeze and drop all over. And I certainly hope you've preheated your oven to 350 degrees. Bake until the top is golden and the cake tester comes out clean. Set your timer for 35 minutes. Might want to stay in for another five. Let the cake cool in the pan on a wire rack for about 30 minutes after coming out of the oven. And then to release it, just remove the clips and the parchment paper. Well, hopefully this will release because we buttered it so well. Mm -hmm. Definitely coming out very nicely. And then cut it into squares. This is such a good way to use up frozen berries. And look how absolutely delicious the berries look. I think you'll agree that black raspberries are a welcome addition to this mid-Atlantic favorite. Joining me today from our test kitchen is Samantha Senevaratna, who insisted we couldn't do a mid-Atlantic show without including one of her favorite New York cookies, the black and white. Technically, the black and white is not a cookie, but a drop cake. And the trick is to add enough flour so the batter holds a shape, but not so much that the cookie becomes dry. So we're gonna start with some dry ingredients, a cup of AP flour, a cup of cake flour. Cake flour gives it that finer texture, so a nice mix between the two. Okay, and then? Half a teaspoon of baking powder. So it's not a lot of leavening for that right. much flour because we don't want it to get too big. Right, and that's nice too. It has a slight roundness Perfect to it. Perfect amount of yeah. dome right. and a quarter teaspoon salt. Okay, so I did that. Now what's the okay. next step? Next step. And no machine, all yeah. by hand. All by hand, it's kind okay. of the greatest. So I have two large eggs and I'm gonna put three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. And there is such a measure, three quarters of a cup, but don't put it in your drawer. <laughs> Do you know why? It's hard. You mix it up with the other the ones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're the worst. <laughs> they are. So I'm just whisking this until it's smooth. Okay. And I'm going to add six tablespoons of melted and cooled butter okay. and half a cup of milk. Okay. And the vanilla. Mm -hmm. Half a teaspoon. 
And then we just dump the flour in. Yeah. Oh, just dump it. It's super easy. Okay. Let's see if I can do it without making a mess. You're on TV. Yeah, I know. <laughs> all right. That's all. And then just cover that and chill it. Chill it for how long? Just till really cold. Really cold. So we found in the test kitchen an hour was not always enough. Overnight is probably best. Okay, and we have one already chilled. So it really stiffens up. Oh, and you have uh, silicon mats, right? Yeah, silicon baking mats. Sure. So this is a quarter cup measure. So the dough is nice and stiff, which is good because if we put it down and it spreads too much, they're going to come out way too thin. Okay. So what, four on a sheet? Yeah, I think four. They do spread. Uh, oven at what temperature? 350 degrees. Okay, it is set. Preheated, make sure, before you start scooping. Yeah, you really don't want this to warm up. And set your time for 12 minutes. These are very cold, so they might take a couple more minutes. Okay, great. So we'll clean up and we'll show how to frost the, yeah, the fun finished part. cookie. So now the icing. So we have two cups of sifted 10x conduction or sugar, and we're adding three tablespoons of hot water. Hot water. Hot water. Okay. And then two tablespoons of corn syrup. Oh, okay, so the secret, you all use this? I would definitely. Oh, okay, so you just spray your little measuring spoon with vegetable spray, and it works like magic. Two tablespoons of light corn syrup. It slides right, right out. Right out, 100%. There's nothing left inside, <laughs> it's so exciting. Okay, so that. Now, why the corn syrup, just to keep it I think it, it makes it nice and, and soft and pliable and really shiny. All right, that looks pretty smooth. So, I always do the flat side. Ah. I like that you can get a nice clean line ah. when you do the flat side. And the flat side's not so pretty exactly. anyway. So it, I think it's easy if you kind of make the line first. Yes. And then go to the edges. Perfect. Okay. And it's not a lot of icing. No, it's not really a lot. You, it's very sweet icing, so you probably don't need that much. I have never purchased a black and white cookie in my life. <laughs> I That's have had the them secret. at people's houses. They're so easy to make and they're so pretty. So to make the chocolate, we're just going to mix in one and a half ounces of semi-sweet. And into here? Right in there. Oh, okay. So you have to finish all your whites before you add the oh, okay. chocolate. I think some people use cocoa powder. Oh. But this tastes better. Oh, I agree. And this tends to be kind of stiff, so I sometimes add a little bit more corn syrup. Okay, corn syrup. Because if it's too thick, then it kind of goes on like a frosting yeah. instead of getting nice and smooth. There. Okay. Okay, now we just do the other side. And it doesn't matter that they're still wet. I don't think so, as long as you're careful. Which I just love how they look. They're just so much fun. My mom used to make black and white cookies because my father loved them. And so then you just leave them on there for about 10 minutes and they'll set up. They look delicious. If you do say so yourself. <laughs> but I think half the fun of baking is complimenting yourself <laughs> on the final product, don't you think? I agree. Oh, so lovely. Let's have one that's already set. Okay. Mm. Oh, cakey, but not dry. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed this episode of Martha Bakes. Thank you so much, Sam. And we'll see you next time on Martha Bakes. Start with room temperature butter. Turn on your mixer to low, and then add the sugar in a slow, steady stream. Use the paddle attachment. When the sugar is incorporated, increase the speed to medium. Scrape down the sides of your bowl to ensure even creaming. Continue beating until lighter in texture and color.